Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about tardigrades, also known as water bears. Also known as, well, what seems to be one of the most fascinating creatures on the planet. And a creature that frankly, about 20 years ago when I went to college, I didn't really know anything about. And I wasn't really the only one, because they weren't really well known until about 2008, when they managed to become pretty much a household name almost overnight, because they were able to survive the dangers of outer space on the International Space Station, or actually outside of the International Space Station, where they survived for approximately 10 days, and were able to be revived afterwards. And since then we've discovered quite a lot of really interesting and fascinating things about these animals, and of course their resilience. And today we know that they seem to be some of the most successful animals on the planet, living on every single continent, in both freshwater and saltwater conditions, in various temperatures and in some of the most hostile regions on the planet where only some life can survive successfully. However, some of the recent research discovered some other things about them, including what seems to be new strength, but also a major weakness that we never knew about before while at the same time discovering new species and also discovering the main mechanism with which these organisms are able to protect themselves from extremely deadly radiation. And that's of course one of the most important findings so far, because that's essentially what we're trying to learn from them in our attempt to one day hopefully leave planet Earth and become an interplanetary or maybe even interstellar species. Now it's also very important to understand that these animals do not survive these conditions in this form. As a matter of fact, all of the animals, including the ones that survive space, transformed into this inactive state known as the Tan state, which is essentially the state they can survive in for up to about 10 years. And that's when they remove a lot of the water from within their bodies, they also become completely inactive, and they use these very specific genetic techniques to protect their own DNA. In other words, when they're in their active state, they're still quite susceptible to a lot of different dangers. And so it's really in their tan state that they're able to survive so many different hazards, including some of the most acidic and hottest conditions on the planet. There's even a pretty good chance that some of these creatures survived on the surface of the moon when the Israeli Bearish Sheet Probe accidentally crashed onto the surface during its attempt at landing on the moon. The probe was carrying several tardigrades inside of it, and they most likely survived in their tan state for at least 10 days as they have in the past on the International Space Station. We don't really know what happened to them afterwards, but they could still be there. And so we've learned a lot about them, including of course that they can survive without any water for approximately 10 years. They can also survive extremely cold and extremely hot temperatures, with the highest temperature record so far being 150 degrees Celsius above the boiling temperature of water. And most importantly, they're also able to survive very high radiation, a lot of different types of radiation. And so some of the recent research, and more specifically this paper coming out of India, discovered that certain species of tardigrades are also able to survive very high ultraviolet radiation, which normally actually kills almost everything on the planet. And this was an accidental discovery because the scientists were trying to see if anything at all could survive the extremely powerful radiation coming from an industrial UV lamp. And to their surprise, the unusually brown creatures living in the moss, which turned out to be a new species of tardigrades, instead of being destroyed like other tardigrades or other creatures they exposed to UV light, became fluorescent, essentially changing the UV light into regular light. And although most creatures, including other tardigrades, perished within about 15 minutes, with none surviving longer than 24 hours, the new species of tardigrades survived for up to 30 days without any major problems. Which essentially means that there are still so many different species of tardigrades we haven't discovered, and there are so many different things they use to adapt to these different conditions on the planet to try to survive even the worst possible situation. And when it comes to the survival of various types of radiation, including some of the higher radiation like x-rays, we've actually discovered how they do this for the most part. We now understand that when they, for example, become the tan state, the dehydrated shrivel state that you see right here, a very interesting protein is activated inside of them that essentially protects their DNA from any sort of damage. Today, this gene and this protein is known as DSUP, damage suppressor. And in the last 10 years or so, a lot of different research has focused on trying to understand how this works and if we can one day use this to, for example, protect ourselves in outer space as well. 
And we're getting closer and closer to understanding how all of this works. Turns out that this D subprotein is created as a kind of an imperfect disordered protein. It's created in such a way that it's not naturally stable. And because of this, it has a tendency to kind of wrap around other molecules, specifically the DNA molecule. In very specific conditions, and in this case we're talking about some sort of a danger coming from the outside, like radiation, tardigrades are able to activate this protein and it starts wrapping around their DNA, essentially protecting it from any other radiation or from any other hazards that might come from the outside. So it's a very unique adaptation technique and it seems to have served them very effectively for millions of years. And discovering how this protein works and also trying to understand how we can adapt it to other creatures, including of course ourselves, might one day lead to some major breakthroughs in medicine and of course in our ability to possibly navigate outer space as well. And although we're still far from being able to use these genes to help humanity in some way, we're actually learning so much from these little creatures. For example, the scientists in the ultraviolet paper were able to extract the pigment that produces these effects and were then able to cover some of the other creatures in this pigment, such as these roundworms that are often used for research, and they were also able to survive the UV light much, much longer than usual. In other words, what we're learning from tardigrades is definitely going to be useful for a lot of various biological research in the upcoming decades. But despite their successes and also despite their resilience, we've also discovered something completely unexpected. They don't seem to be as resilient when it comes to warm water. And this is actually really surprising. Turns out that they can survive really hot water for at least short periods of time, but when it comes to warm water, even the water that's only about 37 to 38 degrees Celsius, which is not actually hotter than a typical um, bathtub, for example, they do have a serious problem surviving this for long periods of time. And so in one of the recent papers, the scientists so in one of the recent papers, the scientists placed tardigrades into water that was about 98 degrees Fahrenheit or about 37 degrees Celsius for roughly around 48 hours. And to their surprise, half of the little guys could not survive these conditions. They did a little bit better if the scientists gave them a chance to acclimate, slowly increasing the temperature instead of just placing them into this warm water directly. And also they did slightly better when they first turned into their tan state, but even in that state, at least 75% of them could not survive warm water for longer than 48 hours. And even in this state, 50% of them perished when the water temperatures went up to about 60 degrees Celsius. And this is of course kind of unexpected and in some sense does destroy their reputation for being indestructible creatures. Because apparently they cannot survive a tub of warm water for longer than two days. But despite this unexpected weakness, there are still a lot of different strengths that we are kind of interested in studying, specifically the strengths that are created by their unusual genetic composition. This very strange D subprotein seems to be unique to them and seems to act in such a way that they're able to survive a lot of really hazardous conditions, protecting their DNA directly. And so discovering how we can apply this to, for example, space travel one day is definitely going to help transform humanity into a successful interplanetary and interstellar species. But for now, that's kind of all we've learned about these beautiful and unusual creatures. And as always, you can find more information in the articles in the description below. On that note, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you still haven't and share this with someone who loves to learn about space and sciences. Also, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else and potentially support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.